Good day, I'm Theodore Henry, and this is your JIS News for Thursday, October 3. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has expressed confidence in the country's ability to satisfy 50% of its energy needs using renewable sources by 2030. Mr. Holness's certainty was buoyed by Wednesday's opening of the Paradise Park solar farm in Savannah Lamar, Westmoreland. With 156,000 solar panels, the farm has the capacity to supply 37 megawatts of electricity to the national grid. Mr. Holness used the opening to call for greater investments in clean energy projects on the island. This is a signal to investors. It's a signal to the OUR. It's a signal to JPS. It's a signal to our financial markets. It is a signal to the citizens of the country that your government is doing everything it can to ensure that we are protecting our own environment by using cleaner energy, but that we are also being good public citizens by ensuring that this global public good called the climate is protected. 17% of the country's electricity comes from wind, solar and hydropower. The Paradise Park Solar Farm was built at a cost of $8.6 billion through a partnership involving the Development Bank of Jamaica, Aid Rivers Energy Company and French company Neonen. The Aid Rivers Energy Company meanwhile donated $4 million to assist the Savannah Lamar Hospital provide services to the community. The government and the opposition are working to reach a consensus on the island's approach to tackling crime. The agreement will be similar to the collaborative approach taken with the recently finalized economic program with the International Monetary Fund. Giving the update in Parliament Tuesday, Prime Minister Andrew Holness said work began in August through the National Partnership Council. Since then, I would say significant work has, has been done and the mechanism uh, is starting to be put in place and I will be meeting with the leader of the opposition we will hopefully reach some consensus as to how we should move forward. And I think Jamaica will look at us in a far better light. An early warning cyber threat system is now being tested by the Jamaica Cyber Incident Response Team, JA CERT. Aimed at improving the island's cybersecurity infrastructure, the system will identify and neutralize cyber threats. As government and as a government entity, we are working to ensure that we have that robust framework to protect our country, our people's data from cyber criminals. Head of JA CERT, Dr. Monifia Hewling, was speaking at the opening of a two-day cybersecurity and public safety symposium Monday. Staged by the Ministry of Science, Energy and Technology, the event saw a number of local, regional and international cyber specialists sharing expertise in the sector. In the meantime, Dr. Hewling revealed that the Honeypot computer security system was being set up in government agencies island-wide to identify cyber threats. Honeypot is a computer security mechanism set to detect and deflect, or in some cases counteract attempts at unauthorized use of information systems. In other news, Jamaica is on track to establish a phytomedicine and medical cannabis institute. Phytomedicine is a plant-based traditional medicinal practice which utilizes various plant materials in preventative and therapeutic processes. In making the announcement, Industry and Commerce Minister Audley Shaw says the institute is part of a research partnership with Harvard International Phytomedicine and Medical Cannabis Institute. Minister Shaw says the partnership will be coordinated to ensure there is economic gain for all stakeholders, particularly farmers and traditional herbalists. Jamaica was chosen to be a part of the International Phytomedicine and Medicinal Institute with the technology and research of Harvard and the science of all herbs will take plant-based medicine and extracts to a new dimension. Minister Shaw was speaking at a press conference on Tuesday at the Ministry's office on Hope Road. Through the partnership, Jamaica's vast botanical resources and their natural medicinal properties will be explored to develop new nutraceutical and pharmaceutical products. 
Government has donated a 1,000-gallon water tank to the Caribbean Christian Center for the Deaf to assist with the water shortage at the facility. Minister Without Portfolio in the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation, Pernell Charles Jr., says the school will be getting two additional 200-gallon water tanks soon. Minister Charles also told the gathering that the National Water Commission would be carrying out an assessment of the school's water supply system. Sensitization sessions on water conservation will also be conducted with the students. We also know that this area is challenged, not just the school. And so we are working to implement the immediate measures to give as much relief as possible. And our long-term goal is to develop a diversified and more resilient system so all Jamaicans that are within our utility service will get consistent delivery of water. And finally, the National Water Commission has relaxed its water restriction measures in the corporate area. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says the decision follows an increase in rainfall and water levels at the corporate area's two main water supply systems. Water levels at the Hermitage Dam is currently at 54%, while the Mona Dam is at 72% of capacity. I think the level of frustration that the public is experiencing is tremendously high and it would be not easy to explain to people why we are having rain and then they still can't get water. So. We will have to relax, but we still are very cautious. Uh, so we're not going to just totally abandon all our conservation methods, but we will relax so that people can get water now. Mr. Holness was speaking in Parliament Tuesday. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching.